What's going on, guys? Tony here with you. Hope everybody's doing okay. Everybody stop freaking out. We can uh, we can calm down, right, and realize it's just one of 82. Of course we can. We got to overreact to everything. But uh, uh, the Miami Heat, they opened up their season with a loss to the Chicago Bulls. A really, like, just lackluster game from uh, from the time midway through the first quarter. Uh, I mean, the Heat really came out guns blazing in this game, especially Tyler Hero. He was looking fantastic in that starting lineup. You know, was hitting everything from downtown. So you just, you're like, all right, things are off to uh, a pretty rocking start here. And then it just, uh, it kind of just unraveled from there. Just couldn't get the uh, the stops that you needed and were, you know, outscored in the second and third quarter pretty handily. And that was just it. They just never could really get back out of the mud in this game. And a couple of weird things that were, you know, I don't think are going to be common traits for them. One was one of the worst halves I've ever seen Bam play. I mean, I I can't recall seeing many basketball games where you see him miss. You know, I've seen Bam miss shots before, but the the bunnies that he was missing, it was crazy. I mean, it was like point blank right there, missed a dunk, missed a little uh, – drop in missed a little layup right here like just point blank and I think he started the night I think it was like oh for nine or something like that it was uh it was a crazy start and at one point he just took the ball like full court because he just kept missing these shots point blank and just literally took the ball full court and dunked it on the bulls just to try and get out of this funk that he was in but it was very clearly like just having an effect on the rest of his game. I don't know what what it was making him uncomfortable. We saw mistakes from him where like he was getting fouled on screens. You're talking about one of the best screeners in the league. Um, he was tossing the ball into the stands. Just just an odd, odd game for Bam Adebayo to start off his 2022-2023 season. Just, and I, I do feel like it, it, it really had an effect because then he got in foul trouble in the second half and you had to bring in Demon who was already in foul trouble. Um, just made things a little bit clunky then. I think the Heat probably would want to, you know, stagger their guys and things like that. Um, and the Bulls, you know, they got a couple of big performances that really swung this game. And one of them happened to be uh, an adorable Slovenian point guard assassin who came in there and started just hitting threes from wherever he wanted to. And I got to say, that was the lone positive of the day was seeing Goran Dragic. Because, first of all, one, his face. How do you not like seeing that smile and face all over FTX Arena? Dude was giving handshakes and hugs all over the place. I miss him so much. I really, you know, they're, it's not D-Wade level, obviously, of breaking your heart because he's on another team. Because, you know, Goron was drafted by the Heat, and he's not like a three-time champion. But he is beloved. I mean, if, if Goron Dragic isn't like in your top ten of beloved Miami Heat players, I don't know what you're doing. And I think for me, it's even higher than that. Um, but he, uh, you know, handshakes and hugs all around. I did have to pay off, you know, my my dragon debt. But you know what? It ended up being worth it because I felt like in, instead of paying a bet, it felt more like I ended up honoring him and genuinely welcoming home. I got like a, a repost on social media from him, uh, from Instagram and a retweet. He seemed to dig it. Everybody did because I think he saw how much people miss him. I think he got to see probably how much people wish the dragon was still in his lair, and uh, even like you know, got a little got a little chuckle out of him in the uh, in the pregame shoot around. What's up, dragon? <laughs> well, I like you let the costume go, Gee. So that was fun. I really enjoyed that. Boots on the ground. Um, I, we are in these new seats, which are cool. I'm actually like right below where Eric Reed and John Crotty call the game. Which is really cool because you could go and see the Heat bunt, uh, bench head on, which I love. Because there was like at one point where like Vucevic, I don't know what he, you know, he was like, uh, I think he was at the free throw line or there was a free throw going on. And like Ban, uh, Jimmy and Nikola Jovic were on the bench together and just, I don't know what the, the conversation was, but there were some jokey jokes happening. And I just love seeing the shenanigans. That made me happy. I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed that. Um as far as, you know, the good from the Heat, Tyler Hero comes out really, really great. 
I am curious. One of the things, and I asked Tyler about this game, but he kind of just like no sold it. Um, he just the idea of like, I wonder what it's going to be like for him to get used to kind of just the flow because he has been used to this six man role coming in, you know, basically Tyler would be like coming in the second quarter, you know, playing a lot or coming in late in the first, first quarter, playing a lot, maybe taking a break, then coming back at the end of the second quarter, same thing, third quarter coming to the end. And then maybe sometimes playing all the way through, depending on like what the defensive matchups are. And here he's starting the game. And then you got to, you know, bring in your reserves. You're bringing in Struce. You're bringing in Duncan. Struce had a great game yesterday. Um, but then, like, they had to hold him off, and the Heat were kind of struggling to score and, and 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 really struggling to keep pace with the Bulls. And you kind of just, like, holding them off, holding them off, holding them off, um, and having to then. You, so you go from I'm the igniter to I have to come in and be part of a closer. So I'm curious to see what that looks like. But all in all, I mean, Tyler Hero, I thought, you know, had a really good start to this game and um, looks like he fits in that starting lineup just fine. So I, I think any issues of chemistry, a little bit silly to talk about or, or worry about. And I think that everybody in this locker room afterwards, you know, DeMar DeRozan was a monster. He uh, he really came out after, uh, you know, Goran Dragic and um, some of the threes that they got in the second quarter swung the game and tied it up and they took the lead and, they go into halftime even. DeMar DeRozan came and took that game by the jugular. I mean, he was hitting everything. Hitting everything over everyone. Getting fouls on everybody. Uh, he was hitting threes over. Like, he was feeling it. He was hitting threes over. Bam. DeMar DeRozan was uh, the star of the game by a long shot. He was amazing. Um, asked Jimmy Butler uh, about this after the game. And, you know, he gives a nod, you know, his the DeMar Goron, his his very good friends. And, you know, he acknowledges they got him. These matchups against guys you're close with, Goron, DeRozan, like, do you enjoy those matchups more? Are they kind of weird because you know these guys no. so well? I enjoy every matchup. Any opportunity that I get to play against some of the best players in this league, I look forward to it. Um, those are my brothers. Um, they got me one time, but we can't let it happen again. But most of the Heat guys are saying, like, this was a defensive issue. Uh, this was not uh, offense, including Eric Spolstra. The game you guys keep on talking up. about uh, offense. I mean, we're we're just giving up like crazy amounts of uh, of easy baskets and and things that um, you know we'll have to clean up defensively just to get back to our identity. Um, and then you know the turnovers in the second half. It's it's tough to get in any kind of rhythm when you're not getting stops and you're turning the ball over. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to look. But you know that that tends to lead to uh, frustration um, when you're not doing either, either of those things well, taking care of the ball or defending. And Tyler Hero echoed those sentiments. The offense isn't the problem. Um, you know, we can score with anybody. Uh, we've got a bunch of guys who can, you know, affect the game on that side of the floor. Um, you know, defense is where we're going to hang our hat, um, especially down the stretch. So we have to, we'll watch film and get better from it today. Just as as far as Bam's concerned, uh, this was him after the game discussing the idea of, you know, just kind of missing shots he makes all the time and 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 what that turned into. The game of inches. <laughs> I mean, that's that's basically how you got to look at it. Uh, you definitely out of a you a positive outcome on this. Um, you know, I miss shots that you know I make every day in practice, every day and shoot around. Um, <laughs> And they were off by inches. Uh, so, I mean, it was one of those games where what don't kill you make you stronger at the end of the day. I would say probably out of everybody, the thing I saw most people freaking out about afterwards, and it was very obvious to the eyes, was the game of Kyle Lowry. And I do think that Kyle has, like, uh, um, you know, for as established as he is and as proven as he is, you know, to the Heat fans, he's he still has some proven to do. You know, he had some really good moments and was especially key when guys were out last year. And so it was a big part of the Heat having the best record in the East last year. But between the injuries and uh, that he had to deal with and, you know, the personal stuff that we don't really have a lot of uh, knowledge of, you know, he's had some adversity to go through in his heat career. And I think that this start, you know, he it, it's still that thing of 
I don't know when he feels the the green light to go and 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 to find his own rhythm in a game because I do think that's important. I think that as great as it is to be unselfish and to try and get everybody involved and and to get everybody and and certainly he tried to get Bam a couple and you know maybe the game looks a little bit better if those are converted, but it, it was it was just one of those games where he and Bam just felt like they were playing in the mud and and just couldn't get going or just weren't being able to do what they needed to do in this one. And for Kyle, everybody's freaking out. They're ready to be rats off a ship on him. The one thing that had me concerned, it looked like he was, uh, he get, he, he, uh, looked like he was, he took a shot when he was trying to go guard Goron on a layup. And, uh, hopefully that's nothing that lingers too much. That always worries you that he maybe took some shot to the quad or to the knee or something like that. But, you know, I, I don't know what you do there. I don't know what you do as far as Kyle Lowry's aggression or what those speeds are. We see that last year he was very deliberate in the pocket of the season where he really upped his scoring. Um, and I do think that you'd kind of like to see that come along faster this year and to see that he has that determination to, to go after things. But yeah, I think Heat fans seeing what Goron did. Goron had a really nice first half, especially. He lit it up. Very emotional to see him there again. Um, and you see the guy that you traded him for, essentially with Precious Achua, and he was stinking up the joint yesterday. That always will add on top of the fact of a, of a, of a clunky, not great performance from him. But, you know, the one thing with this Heat team and the NBA season, this is going to start fast and furious. You know, you got another game turnaround, Celtics right away, a back-to-back with the Raptors, and then the Raptors again before you go out to the West Coast. So, there's some good challenges. I think the thing that's probably disappointed a lot of Heat fans is this is looked upon as probably the easiest challenge because they didn't have Zach Levine, no Lonzo Ball. This is uh, pretty much DeMar DeRozan's show, and you really got uh, you really got handled by them in the second half, especially DeRozan. He went supernova on you, um, you know, 37 points, six rebounds, nine assists, you know, just a super efficient game from him. And then for your... Standpoint, you just had nobody really have that monster, monster performance. Jimmy had 24 points, got to the free throw line 16 times yesterday, 16 times. And to me, that's awesome. That's his superpower. But 16 times getting to the free throw line, and he just he took some hard, hard shots, hard shots early on in that game. And that's the one thing I think you'll worry about for Jimmy is is coming into this and and you're like man can anybody just kind of buoy him so he can get to the you know Jimmy's gonna probably miss his 20 games that's that's gonna be the case but you know he was he was really attacking the holy hell out of the uh the rim and it just wasn't there for him and you know for him yesterday he was 24 points eight rebounds you know one steal one block um you know the the and and I think that the you know he could have uh, he definitely could have used a little bit of uh, could have used a little bit of help from that second quarter on because you know Tyler came out really really great he hit his first I think four three pointers didn't hit one the rest of the night finished with twenty three points but you know Max Struess was good Max Struess had a good game Dwayne Dedman in the minutes that he played he did get into foul trouble but I thought that you know he did pretty fine on the offensive end of this thing but again they were everybody to a man in that team was saying that offense wasn't the issue yesterday that it was a defensive issue and hard to argue you know they uh that that was a uh that was tough that they couldn't get the key stops like i think they got to within like six once in that second half after the bulls took the lead um And it was, you know, they just never could get those back-to-back stops. They would get like a turnover, and then there would be a foul or something like that. So back at it, you know, it'll be uh, be interesting to see if they can uh, right the ship right away and get themselves right as the Celtics roll into town.